Okay, hey, so we're live. Um, this is, my name's David Bradley, uh, Senior Sales and Marketing with Grant Cardone's office. I'm here with my good buddy, uh, Anuj Pillay. Anuj lives in India. He's been studying Grant for a little bit, but what I wanted to do on this call or in this short conversation is just understand a little bit more about Grant's impact on the international market, about how Grant can help and serve people in other countries. It's not just, we're not just limited to the good old United States of America. And so, um, our goal as a company is we literally want to impact the entire planet. We want to touch every person on planet Earth and somehow create or help people become more at cause for what happens in their life to be able to create their own economy and to literally have financial freedom for themselves. And that, that's, some, that's our big picture goal. And so to be able to be here today with my buddy Anuj and have a conversation about how Grant Cardone has impacted his life, this is going to be, this is going to be awesome. So um, without further ado, I am going to turn it over to Anuj. So Anuj, introduce yourself. Tell, tell, the, tell the kids at home who you are and, and what you do. <laughs> Absolutely, David. You know, thank you so much for having me. Uh, you know, my name is Anuj Pillai, and I'm a sales professional. From the last 12 years, I've been doing selling, multiple arenas, B2B, B2C. And I'm also a blogger. I blog about sales. Uh, I share sales related content on my blog. That's a private project that I'm doing. And that's, that's a short you know, introduction about me. So if people want to read your blogs and, and, and dig into some of your expertise as a sales professional, what, what's the name of the blog? Yeah, uh, the site is uh, prosalesblogger.com. Uh, I'll repeat it, it's prosalesblogger.com. And it's a startup site. I'm in the final uh, stages of completing it, just final tweaks left. And, you know, people can visit it. You know, I've, uh, I've posted a couple of blogs, but the larger picture is I want to kind of uh, connect mentors, you know, across the world with people looking to increase their sales. It might be a restaurant owner, you know, who's struggling with, uh, you know, increasing his sales. It might be a B2B IT sales professional selling softwares like me. So mentors like Grant and people who are looking for, you know, increasing their sales and getting training and learning. And I'm looking to merge, you know, these two audiences together for my blog in the long run. You know what, what I really like about your blog is that it is very solution orientated. Like the first thing you see on the blog, yeah, yeah, what's, yeah. What, 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 asking, what's the problem? Where do you need help? Um, which is very much in line with what we teach, which is that service is senior to selling. And so the fact that you're coming in from a place of, hey, what, you know, what, what do you need help with? How can I help you as a professional? Um, I also love the fact that, because I was in the restaurant industry for many years before I got into sales. sales. But the reality is, is that if you, if you wait oh. to use a 10 bar, if you're a server, uh -huh. man, your income is dependent on sales. Here in, in the States, people tip, right? They leave gratuities for service rendered. So exactly. Um, the higher exactly. the check, the more you make. So realistically, you're in sales. Exactly. So exactly. I, I love the fact that you touch on right. that. It's fantastic. Um, the other thing I want to touch on real fast mm -hmm. just before we get into some of the lessons you learned from Grant is, you know, you're in India, right? Mm -hmm. what, what time is it there? Yeah. Yeah. What time is uh, it? It's, it's, it's 1045, about 11 p.m. now here in India. At night. At night, yeah, 11 p.m. Because it's Saturday morning for me, right? And when we're done with the call, I'm going to go on a run. I got my expander contract T-shirt on. Uh, <laughs> I'm, you know, I, I'm right. Gonna, right. So, <laughs> up at 11 o'clock at night, and I, I just want to commend you on that. That shows uh, some yeah. professionalism and dedication. Um, I love the fact that you got some of Grant's books in the background, good product placement, you know. So what what is that? What right. is it about right. the right. fact that it's 10, 10 11 o'clock at night and you're, you're in a suit right now? What is that? Why, why are you in a suit? You right know, it's, 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 you know, to answer it in one word, it's curiosity. You know, uh, I'm so happy to be, you know, seven years back, you know, uh, I saw Grant on YouTube via a reference from one of my boss. And somehow or the other, Today, after seven years, I'm in his influence. You know, I got connected to you. We are talking with each other. I'm directly connected with Grant's company and, you know, a person like you. So, you know, it's curiosity, learning more. Uh, and, you know, it, it's, it's the idea. You know, in life, you get frustrated 
when you don't know the end result, you know, mm. when you do cold calls, you know, why you get frustrated. It's because you don't know the benefits if you, are, if you, if you get successful after cold calling. So, yeah. you know, I know the benefits, you know, where, where things lead to, you know, the power that we push out, the activities that we push out. You know, I'm talking to you today. God knows, you know, what will happen. The activities we do, somehow or the other, it will result into good things. So, you know, that's, that's the curiosity that I have, you know, made me dress up at night, it, 11 p.m. And I'm talking to you. Well, good. <laughs> number one, good for you for doing it. And, th and thank you for that. And, and, and that's a very... My pleasure. My pleasure, David. 10X. One of the things, last year at, uh, at the yeah. 10X Growth Conference, the second one we did, the question that Grant asked to... The uh -huh. audience walked out in front of about 10,000 people and just said, hey, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. Are you going to expand or are you going to contract? Like, this is a decision that you're going to make. Every, every choice right. you make in your life is going to, it should be based on this. Is what I'm about to do an expansion activity or is this contraction? So when you go to make a phone call like you were talking about and you're nervous about making a phone call, you need to make the call, right? Because that's expansion versus contraction. If you don't make the call, you hide, you suddenly exactly. have to go to the bathroom or gonna get more coffee or whatever. Those are contraction, those are, you're contracting. And so uh, I love wearing this shirt. Um, anytime I do a public speaking event for myself, if it's appropriate, I will wear this shirt. Uh, Cause I think there's so much to learn from this concept about, hey man, what, you know, the, the entire universe, if you wanna get big picture like metaphysical, the universe, right is still expanding. We had the Big Bang how many billions of years ago and the universe is right. still expanding. So for you right. to not expand, expand. You, you're fighting the universe and you're not going to win that war. Right? So now exactly. you found exactly. So you found Grant, you said like seven years ago? Yeah, uh, you know I was I was doing inside sales for you know an IT software company based in the Silicon Valley there. And I was, I was responsible for inside sales, you know, making cold calls and getting appointments, C-level executives for my boss who, who was based in the US. So I used to set appointments, he used to go and meet them. So, you know, I, in my life, I accidentally happened to get into sales. It was not by choice, it was by destiny. I accidentally happened to get into sales and I had no clue. You know, here's the list, here's the pitch. All them set the appointment, and these are C-level executives with you know big major companies. Right. So you know making 150 calls a day, you know out of that 145 people won't pick up. Would go to the voicemail. Even if somebody picks up, I don't have the confidence to talk to them. You know, and you know even if some objections come up, it, it's a nightmare. You know, I expect I call them, I ask them an appointment, I give them my pitch, I ask an appointment, and they give me an appointment, but it never happens. They ask us questions and it, it's really, it was really tough. And, you know, I was, I was thinking like, you know, where am I in, what am I doing, you know, what would be my life like after 10 years from now? You know? I mean, if you look back seven uh, can years. Can you repeat, like, David? Like, if you go back seven years, like from where you're at now, how did that experience yeah. help you become who you are today? Uh, I mean, you know, what I would say today is, you know, these challenges, that I just mentioned about it, particularly the technical aspects that I just mentioned. It's a given in sales, you know, it will be there. Nobody, people are supposed to not pick up your phone. It will go, go to the voicemail. People are supposed to answer, you know, ask you questions. It is a given, you know, challenges are given. It's how, you know, we train ourselves to handle those situations and move forward. You know, that's what now today I, I face a problem i have a difficulty I, I think it's a given it's a given you know it would be there these challenges will be there it will come today it will come tomorrow but i'm better prepared to handle those through training you know through mostly through training and skill enhancements correct so what's interesting and, and the reason I'm, I'm asking that so i'm curious is that in there is a very large i don't know if it's huge huge but there is a definite consortium of people in the sales arena that are very much against cold calling mm -hmm. they feel like cold calling is dead right and that it has no benefit <laughs> i won't agree with that right has no benefit at all so if if you were talking to somebody like that what what would you say to them if they tried to convince you that cold calling is dead has no benefit um it's outdated doesn't help No, it's like, you know, you're opening up a shop, 
for example, I'm opening up, I'm opening up a television electronics, you know, a shop or a mall, uh, you know, in the locality. What would happen if I just sit there, you know, and expect customers to come in and ask me, you know, what's your product, how much do you charge? And it's not like that, you know, I'm sitting at the shop, I have televisions to sell and I have to send my people or I have to go. I have to meet, you know, sites which are under construction. Uh, you know, people who are buying new houses, people who are setting up new companies. Do you need televisions? Do you need air conditioners? How much? You know, you have to go out there. You know, this is something cold calling related and it's fast. You know, you cannot depend on references too much. It, it is the lowest hanging fruit, but you know, all these, you know, internet marketing 2.0 or whatever concept it is, you know, it, it takes time. You know, yeah, but yeah. picking up the call, asking somebody you know this is what i offer and you know i would like to understand it if you are interested because of a b c d you know we can meet and talk and it is way more cheaper to do way more faster to do and everybody does that you know maybe some people say that it won't work but you know the companies that i work with and the companies that i've seen especially in the b2b space everybody does that it's, it's cold calling I, I have worked with companies with people having 100 people cold callers, you know, a team of 100 people doing cold yeah. calls. So, you know, cold calling is not dead. That's what I would say to you. I, do, one of the things that I, do you feel like, why, why do you think some people believe that though? Is that just because they haven't fully embraced it and gone all in on it? Or do you feel like it's something that they don't have the skill set, so then they make a, uh, an inaccurate decision on it? Or is it, I mean, Grant talks a lot about your outflow, oh, you know, to your inflow, that obscurity is your biggest problem. Right. And then if you're not seeing the result, you right. might because you lack motivation or skill. And if you can simplify it down to that, I mean, that's usually the challenge with a lot of cold callers is that they didn't have the right amount of motivation. They didn't have the appropriate amount of skill. And so then therefore they made a decision that this doesn't work. Would you you know, I would like to answer it very simply, you know, David. Uh, you know, I'd like to answer it very simply, David. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, people say that cold calling is dead. For example, you know, if you ask the CEO of the company that I work with, stop cold calling. And the, here's a, another way to get more leads. He would say just, just you know, get out. Yeah. We will have to do cold calling. It's that important. I love it. So... We have to assess who are the people who say that cold calling are dead. Are they selling some kind of a product? You know, <laughs> is, you know I, I've not seen a person like me. Yeah, I've not seen a person like me who would say because I, I do cold calling even today. So we have to know who are the people telling cold calling is dead. Good insight, man. Really good insight. So when you found, so yes. how did you find Grant again? You said you saw him on YouTube. Yeah, my manager. You know. I was struggling in sales with one of the company and my manager sent me a link. It was a link wherein, you know, Grant was uh, making a cold call. And on that call, you know, he was saying, trying to sell, I think, Cardone University and there were objections. And he was answering that and the questions that he was answering, you know, that, that got me excited. Okay, so this is the same challenge that I face. Right, right. He overcame that. Then the another one, then another one. So I, I looking into more videos and I, for the first time, I got excited about you know selling as a profession. So I thought oh, there is there is something in it that I can learn, and then I can I can be good at it. So you know I, I also I last time when we spoke I mentioned to you that I also sent uh, you know Grant a LinkedIn message. You know these are the five points that I'm facing challenge with. What should I do? He replied you know uh, seems lack of training. Get my book you know sell or be sold. So it's right behind there. So I read that book. Half, not even half the book, and I, I felt the confidence. It, you know, completely shifted my mindset about sales. Uh, you know, and it, it got the you know, ball rolling. So that's how I found Grant. And today, you know, I'm very happy to say and very thankful. You know, thanks to Grant and the other mentors I have here with me. You know, I've traveled over six countries. You know, selling uh, multiple things, and you know, it, it's in a short span of seven years. It's all because of training. Over the over the last seven years, um, just so everyone can grab can grab it, not in dollars and cents, but maybe in percentage. 
how has Grant's training mm -hmm. and content, to what percent has it impacted your, your income and your situation in life? Uh, I, would, I would put it the other way around, you know, 80 to 90 percent I use Grant's content. Uh, and, you know, every day I watch at least one video on YouTube, you know, that Grant is speaking every day in the morning you know that, that's a ritual i follow because it gets the mindset right even if i'm feeling low you know we are humans we feel low sometimes so i, I at least watch one video a day and income wise you know I've, uh, because of grant and as i said two or three other mentors i have here you know my bosses etc financially i'm doing pretty well you know i, I come from a very humble beginnings uh, you know from the time of i was born Till the time I was 18, we used to live in a 10 feet by 10 feet house. So it's 10 feet by 10 feet. That's that's where we live. But today I have a couple of houses. This one right here is the one that I live in currently. So not bragging, but you know, that had, had significant effect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Please. Brag. There's nothing wrong with it. There's like, you know, I and I understand where you're coming from though at that point because if if you have had humble beginnings and how many people were you growing up with in this 10 by 10 house uh four of us four of us my younger sister and my parents okay uh four of us were there and, and my father had migrated from the local town so uh, you know it was how it was but i picked up uh and and thank god and i look forward to you know making more progress and you have by associating myself with five people like me. So, uh, how many houses do you can have? Can you repeat the question? Right now, a couple of them, two houses. A couple. So is that it's, two or three or uh, four? Or? So here, you know, uh, the housing concept is slightly different. This is like a flat. We call it a flat or an apartment, you could say. It is a you know, two-bedroom apartment. And the other one I have was the earlier one, the one-bedroom apartment. But it costs significantly higher in the city that I live in. Okay. So it is considered to be kind of upper upper middle class. I would say that. Love it. So, ten foot house to two. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, congratulations. So, <laughs> what? What? The, Thank you. Thank or, you. I mean, it just. I think and I'm glad that we brought that up. That was kind of unanticipated, but I think it's important for people to understand that if you study, mm -hmm. practice, and you train and you learn and most importantly apply what you're learning um you can have a significant impact in in changing your situation you know and there's no need nobody absolutely to, absolutely right um so awesome when we started this discussion a couple of weeks ago on the phone it was what are your top mm -hmm. three the th three most big lessons or takeaways, how like the top three things that you've gotten from Grant that has literally helped you. And now that I've got even more context on it, go from 10 by 10 house right. to two. So what, mm -hmm. what are those three things? What are the top right. three? You know, I will, I will not get into the technicalities of, you know, sales and these things. I'll, I'll just sum it up at a, larger picture, I'll give you a larger picture. So, you know, first is uh, what I learned from Grant is the importance of training that everybody needs. You know, for example, if, if, if you give me an M16 rifle and, and a suit of a soldier and ask me to fight, I won't be able to fight. Although I am a same human being, you know, uh, same weapons, you know, everything is same, but I won't be able to fight. Why? Because I need training, you know, uh, to apply those equipments and apply, the tactics to fight in the battlefield. Similar to us, you know, can I can I be a good actor? You know, I can. If I train for the next five years, I can be a better actor from what I'm today. So it's all about training. You know, that that's one important thing. You need one or two skills additional to perform or to grow in your job if you are a working professional. You need skills, you know, you need training and you know you need to learn from people who are already successful at you know what you want to do so one one important thing is the importance of training that i learned uh, david second you know i would say is uh, you know the importance of having mentors this is you know now these things are not something that grant has mentioned in his books or uh, you know, teaches in training this is what 
is my uh, you know understanding is you need to be you need to associate yourself you know, with people uh, who can take you up you know, uh, you know that's importance of mentors you know my father my my mom my parents can teach me to be ethical you know to be a good person they can teach me to study hard but they cannot teach me to be a successful businessman if they themselves do not own a business so i need to be associated with people you know uh, in my area of you know interest uh, to move ahead so that's that's very important otherwise you'll get stuck at a level if you don't have mentors a third thing is you know uh, is financial wisdom you know that's what you know i have learned from grant you know it's it's not about the financial management techniques or technicalities that i'm talking about but overall you know your it's more to do about your attitude you know towards money you know how you can get more money you, know, you need not be stagnant the problems that you have currently are not the problem that you have forever if you see grants videos and these things you you come to know challenges you overcome those challenges so and you know it's, it's good to have money and you can support your family you can support you know your loved ones your relatives and you know the community in the long run so a financial wisdom you know is something three things so importance of training importance of having mentors and financial wisdom these are the three things that i would say impacted me a lot so the i love what you're saying here i the the importance of training obviously and and your example is spot on right so i always say that to to people right. now hey if you know if if we in, in the 40s in the 30s and 40s if we trained our military the way a lot of companies train their salespeople here in the states we'd all be speaking german or russian right now right right so, <laughs> right. so um, that, right i love that you bring that, that that point up and the the idea about having continuous improvement um you know you you're exactly. never, you never right you know, you, you, you can't be, that's, you know, that's why, you know, in a lot of military organizations, it's such an, it's such a great example, but you have to continually re-qualify and show that you can meet the standard exactly. of expectation of your position, of your role, of your duty. And if you can't, then they don't want you out there because lives are on the line. So when you go to your third point that you're making there, exactly. in terms of financial wisdom, if you're not able mm -hmm. to generate revenue, if you're not mm -hmm. able to create financial solvency for yourself and your family which is your home economy if you're not able to do that then you have to go back to the right. training aspect and re-qualify and that's a cycle that never ends and if you're looking exactly. to improve on that and expand as, as grant talks about then are you every single day doing a little bit of something to get better and so the fact that you're banging out a youtube video every single morning uh is a great testament to that and the fact that you got his books in the background also right. as well. um, I'm curious uh, with exactly. so the mentor aspect, was that something that you sort of have known or intrinsically, or was that something that you may have heard from Grant that you're like, okay, that's, yeah, I need to do that. What, what, when did, when did you realize that? Actually what was happening was, you know, David, um, I was, uh, I'm doing sales from the last 12 years, but you know, I was stuck at some level. I was the maximum I could reach was an inside sales or cold calling job, you know, in the city that I live in. So there was no growth after that, but you know, I knew some good people I worked for in the in the previous organizations. You know, they knew that I'm a hardworking person. You know, they invited me. You know, and that took off my international career. And you know, that's when I realized, you know, just having one good mentor in in this in the career aspect, you know. It, it, gave a rise. Similarly, when I was not know, knowing anything about sales and I was kind of thinking of finding some other job other than sales, you know, that's when Grant kicked into my life and, you know, took off, you know, it gave a different path to me. So, and this is, these are just two, two examples, uh, you know, David, uh, but there are more examples, you know, so I have, I have mentors in each of the fields. You know, I have mentors who help me with the money that I earn, you know, of investments and these things not much again but uh, you know i have good mentors in each levels you know my mom is you know one of my mentors who teach me a lot of things uh, you what know so you mentors from? it's it's important what 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 did you learn from your mom 
life. You know, uh, she she was a very struggling woman, uh, and you know, to be truthful always, say the truth, be ethical. You know, these are small things to hear, but it, it, it is not very easy to follow. So if your mom even throughout the difficulties, you have to be solid. And yeah. I'm sorry. Is she still alive? Yeah, she's here. She's here in the house. And uh, she's still alive and doing good, and she's happy. Uh, she also reads, you know, Grant's book, whatever she can grab from it. So oh, right on. She, she loves it. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, my David, mom, can you repeat that last question? Yeah. Oh, I just, I was, my, my mother passed away in 98, and it's always, um, whenever somebody oh. brings up, you know, what did you learn? Like my mom has been this and that. And I always like to ask about that. And like she, my mom taught me patience and unconditional love. And she had this amazing uh -huh. way, of it, which, and I try and I try and do this. I fail miserably at it more often than not, but I, I literally try to, no matter who it is I'm talking to, no matter what, who I'm interacting with to try and find Mm -hmm. the good in them to find you know um i think mother Teresa said they asked her like how does she deal with what she sees in calcutta when she was alive and she said i see jesus christ in everybody and i look for that uh -huh. and my, my, my mother lived by that right. as well and i know in you know the indian culture namaste and you you know you see the light in people and so whether it's it's it doesn't matter yeah. what religion you're in but there is a light in a person so it's like you need to look for that and that's one of the, the most amazing lessons that my mom taught me and if we went back to the whole cold call thing it's very important that for me like you have uh -huh. to recognize that whatever is about to come out of this guy's mouth has nothing to do with you right nothing to do with them and that there is a spark of the divine in that person as well. And you have to find a way to connect with that. Right. And if you go back to taking exactly. responsibility for everything that happens in your life, if that connection doesn't happen, that's on you. It's not them. And that's exactly. a hard thing to do, right? It's so easy that's to true. write people off as you're a jerk and you're da 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 da. Well, no, that's not the reality of it at all. Because most likely <laughs> they have a mind right. just like exactly. you. Dad, they have a life it's like no whatever they're about to do right now has no bearing on you they don't know you they don't you don't know them it's like you know exactly yeah that's a that's a huge life lesson um is there exactly anything indeed. else that, that you want to share Thanks for sharing. yeah 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 is, is there anything else you'd want to like add or contribute to that in terms of like what you got from grant how grants helped you Right, you know, I would, I would uh, request, you know, whoever is uh, viewing this video, both of us, you know, are from sales profession and, you know, people, you know, who watch Grant on YouTube, they're looking for something related to sales, you know, and improving their life. So I would, you know, recommend, and it's, it's, it's not only me, you know, India has such a huge population. I have a lot of friends, you know, and many of them are in sales uh, and all of them, all of them, you know, who watch Grant. You won't even imagine how many of them. So, you know, uh, take, take advantage of, you know, what is available today. We have uh, YouTube, you know, to get, you know, free content, you know, 80% of your content I know is free. Uh, you know, other than that, you can read books to begin with, you know, uh, and, you know, it is life changing. You know, you have to be disciplined, learn new things, apply it, you know, uh, you know, what to say, take action, uh, massive action rather, as, as it says in the 10 next book. And, you know, you'll be successful. So if, if, if you're frustrated, you know, access uh, the content that Grant has to offer. And it will definitely, in a few years, a you know, couple of years, maybe it will change the course of your life. So I'm going to ask, I'm just going to do three rapid fire questions, and then we can wrap it up because it, it's always interesting to get perspective. Mm -hmm. um, also, before I forget, so in addition to being a blogger, what is the, who, who do you, what's your company and what do you guys do? Cause if somebody's like stumbling on this video and they're like, I like this guy, like I want to go work. Right. How do people find you if they want to work with you, whether it's as from pro sales blogger or if it's from your current company, what's your current company? Uh -huh. uh, my current company is, is an Indian headquartered company. We sell softwares B2B. So I work there in a sales position. Uh, I, I manage the Middle Eastern market for sales. I get sales from there. Uh, you know, so working for that company is, is not something that, you know, I can help, you know, people with because it's a company here in India. 
Yeah. But you know, ProSales Blogger, you know, you can log on to the site. You know, in a couple of weeks, it will be up, and you know, I'll be sharing. It's a sales blog. You know, I don't expect anybody to be watch. You know, logging on to the site every day, and there there are a lot more things available. But eventually, I'll be bringing in mentors onto the site, and you know, uh, figuring out a way how we can connect the needy people or aspiring people, curious people who want to you know, increase their sales, increase their business the right mentors you know like Grant Cardone so you know you can you can uh, kind of log into the site and you know, kind of watch out for the content that comes up what's your favorite? make sense to you David yeah I love it man I, I, I yeah. absolutely what's your favorite Grant Cardone book sell or be sold first book and it's, it's a favorite book till the end no questions do you have a do you have a favorite chapter or a favorite quote or piece out of that book that, that really resonates with you? Yeah, you know, in the first chapter itself, it says, you know, uh, you know, everything in life is a sales and all you need is a commission. You know? mm -hmm. So I, I like that, you know, very much. A commission doesn't literally mean a commission, you sell something and take a brokerage, but it, it means closing a transaction. You know, you need to close a transaction in life, you know, whatever you do to mm. get money in exchange yeah. for the value you provide. So that's the logic, you know, that I, that I work with. And I, I, like, this is a transaction for me, you know, the video interview that we are doing. It's a transaction. You know, I don't know the value, but I'm sure something would come up in the near future. So you need to be selling, you need to be doing activity, you need to be pushing more things out. Okay. Now, if this, if Grant is involved in this next question, great. If not, totally fine too. But the biggest lesson that you've in life, like what is the biggest, the, the mm -hmm. most important lesson you've ever learned in life? Who taught it to you? Where did you get it? Uh, uh, tough question. I won't be able to spontaneously answer. Uh, but, you know, biggest uh, thing would be, you know, my mom always, tells me, you know, patience, uh, you know, it's the same uh, that you said, it's about patience, you know, if, you, if you're having a problem today, don't be shaken by it, you know, figure out a way out of it, you know, don't just sit idle blaming yourself and crying, just think, you know, how can you get out of it and, you know, work towards it. So this is a small piece of information that I received and I stand by it. I think it's so important what you just said about like not being idle about the whole thing. Like you have a problem, patience right. is, an, is an important piece of that because you just need to have the patience to know that you can work through this. But what's also most important is that you're not idle about it. Like you just don't sit there, like do something, right? You're better exactly. off to go in one direction and, think, wrong yeah. and to go fast through it. So you find out that you're wrong faster than to just wait and see right. what's going to happen or not do anything. And then, and then nothing happens, right? You can't, like, if you have water and it stays stagnant, exactly. even water is going to spoil. So like, you got to be moving, right? Exactly. I, I love that you brought that exactly. up. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Do yeah. you have a yeah. bucket list? Do you know what that is? Uh, bucket list for what? So, <laughs> In, in the United States, there's a phrase um, that uh -huh. kick the bucket. Have you ever heard that before? Kick the bucket? Yeah. Yeah, I've heard it in movies, yeah. Yeah, so it means you Who die. Kick the bucket? When you kick the bucket, you die. <laughs> oh. So there are yeah, yeah. things that... It's in the handover movie. <laughs> right, there's a movie called The Bucket List, right? So, like, things that, that you want to... Yeah. Something's on your bucket list. It's something that you have to you have to accomplish before you die. So, uh -huh. like, do you ha what's on your bucket list? Like, what's the number one? Like, what's the one thing you have to accomplish, do, see, participate in, or get handled before you check out? Uh, it's it's basically you know as simple as my family should have enough that even if I'm not there. They, they can live happily, you know, uh, enough in terms of wealth, in terms of education. You know, they should have enough. Even if I'm not there, they should be able to sustain a good living, a decent living. So it's very simple, uh, but I wouldn't be able to tell you know, how much money that might be or something. But 
know, I need to be sure, you know, no loans, no debt, you know, enough money in the bank, enough properties, good education. You know, so that would be a thing that I would care about. So that you can transition and know that everybody that's staying behind is covered. Yeah, and that, that has to do with the Indian culture, you know, uh, David. Uh, we here, we, we take care of a family. Most of us, you know, 90% of us, we live with the family throughout till the end. So, you know, uh, if, if you're a child and you start, if you get, get on a job after your education, you support your family immediately. So, you know, it has to do with the family a lot here in India. So everybody takes care of the family. The elder, elder brothers, elder sisters, their education, you know, their job. So it's, it's a more kind of, you know, family oriented. Maybe we'll meet here in India sometimes and I'll take but, you around. <laughs> so I, I, I love that so much. And I think like that, that's such a, I always talk to people about their driving force. Like what is it that drives you, right. you get motivated, right? You can get motivated. You can watch a video. You can do some push ups, or, you know, you can listen to the right amount of music and you can get jacked up. Right. But that is not going to last. Eventually that, right. 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 It's the, it's the driving exactly. force. It's the thing that drives you to keep pushing, to keep getting hung up on, to keep making the calls, to keep going through everything that a sales professional goes through or any business exactly. for that matter to, and to keep pushing up against the adversity that comes. Cause there's something behind you that is bigger than you that drives you. And so the fact that it's your family, exactly. uh, exactly. I think it's fantastic. So exactly. Um, exactly. hey, thank, you, exactly. thank you so much for doing this with me. I know it's way past your bedtime. I, I imagine you're just going to go to sleep in your suit, which is fine. <laughs> I've done it. <laughs> I can do another interview with you. Right? Yeah. Right and uh, <laughs> so again, so for those of you that are watching, it's, it's just prosalesblogger.com, right? Exactly. Okay, so if you want to connect exactly. with me. Please log in, you know, please have a look at it. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. If you want to connect with the news, it's prosalesblogger.com. If you want to connect with me, um, my blog is called cardonesolutions.com. Uh, either one of us are totally here to help serve, deliver what you need to, to create um, your own exactly. company and to continue to grow and expand in the marketplace. So, hey, Anuj, again, thank Absolutely. you so much, man. Great chatting with you. I love it. We should do this again sometime, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. Cool. We should, we should, you know. I'll get back to you, David, on that. And I'm getting a t-shirt similar. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll put some comments on if somebody loves the shirt and wants to get it. Um, also, if anybody yeah. wants to look at Cardone University, I'm happy to hook anybody up with three days of free access to that. Um, you can reach out to me at cardonesolutions.com or my email is just david at grantcardone.com. So, but again, thank you so much, Anuj. Guys, please, please, have an awesome please reach out to David. Happy holidays to you.